Hi and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. Today we would be discussing the problem subarray with given sum. So let's talk about the feedback of this problem is this was given that this is a sorted array and then we are told that you need to return any subarray which sums up the value given x then it is good enough but if it is not it is termed as an easy problem but it is not it is a medium level problem so if you are not able to solve it don't panic okay so you here in this question you are given an unsorted array and you need to find the first subarray which sums to the given value x itself let us see the sample test case so we are given 1 2 3 7 and 5 and we the value that we want is nothing but 12 so if you observe the very first this one would give us the value at 12 itself okay this is the subarray that is why this index is 2 and this index is 4 basically it is one based indexing that you need to return on seeing on the first distance the very first approach that you need to give to your interviewer is nothing but finding all possible subarrays and then returning the first one which is nothing but one then two then three then four then five then six okay then not three then three then seven and then five itself talking about two elements it can be one two then it can be two three then it can be three seven then it can be seven five okay then it can be one two three then it can be two three seven so this approach you would give to your interviewer and your interviewer would tell you to optimize it okay so a little bit of optimization that can be done is if you observe these two sub arrays then considering sub arrays of size 3 considering sub arrays of size 2 considering sub arrays of size 4 the only difference in there is that one is going out and new element is popping in so if you observe that if particular 3 that is 1 2 3 and the difference of 2 3 7 the first element is going out and the last element is put at its place so you can use a sliding window approach then the interviewer would tell you that can you optimize this yes you can absolutely optimize this okay here comes the concept of prefix sum that comes to our mind if you already know prefix sum that is what you can do is you can do something like this so now it can be seen that the prefix sum till the first index is 1. If you are not acquainted with prefix sum, consider learning that and then coming back. And the prefix sum till this point is 3, then 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 7 13, 13 plus 5 is equals to 18 itself. Okay. So now see a very cunning approach is being made. So if you observe, we need the value 12. So we come here and we see the current prefix sum minus 12. Why? Because so see if this segment is giving a value x okay let's say the sub prefix sum till this point was some value a okay and this value is x so this value would be nothing but a plus x what i want to tell you if let's say the prefix sum till this value is 5 and let's say this value is 3 that is here comes 1 and 2 so this would be 5 plus 3 that is 8 the prefix sum value at this point would be 8 5 5 plus 1 6 6 plus 2 8 so if you observe that to have a section of x you can simply go to minus x so what you can do is 1 1 minus 12 we don't have anything up till now 3 minus 12 we don't have up till anything up till now 6 minus 12 we don't have anything up till now 13 minus 12 is equals to 1 and yes we have it so if you observe the point after it to the current point would give me the prefix sum so basically you need to go back and search interviewer would tell you to optimize it further what you can do is you can simply use an unordered map with the average time complexity as constant but the worst time complexity is big of n square you can easily use a map if this thing comes up and the time complexity would be log n. So basically, you can simply have a subarray of this kind. Okay. But there is a problem in that. Making out the prefix sum and storing it in a hash map would require big O of n because it might be the scenario that the last part of the subarray is giving an, us an answer. 
and we are storing all the previous values that is we are storing all the n minus 1 values in the map itself and they are all very unique so space complexity would be big of n and the time complexity would be big of n now the interviewer would tell you to optimize it further how can i optimize it now comes the concept of something known as two pointers okay so two pointers intuition is not very much evident i can understand but i would try to give you an intuition that it is possible okay let's say it is 1 2 3 7 5 we start from this point and we go till the point till the sum is less than 12 so 1 plus 2 3 3 plus 3 6 6 plus 7 is equals to 13 now at this point this becomes 13 whenever the sum become greater we would make this left here we would in initialize a left pointer and this would be a right pointer whenever we initialize the sum is becoming more we would make this left go less whenever the sum is less we would make the right go this side if l is standing here and r is going further then the sum between these two range would increase if the sum is more and we want to decrease it we would make the l go this side okay r would go on that side and l would go on this side okay so this intuition would come to your mind if you have already solved some problems of two pointers because the very first problem of two pointers is sub array with the given sum here we are told that we need to find the first instance but if you want the intuition of it consider solving the problem sub array with given sum x in a sorted array if you have solved that problem and then you are seeing this problem that trick would strike into your mind basically this is not an intuitive approach but this is a trick based approach which would pop into your head if you have solved that problem okay so i focus a lot on intuition itself so let me be just very clear with this so the idea is very simple we would initialize l and r is equals to zero while we would store that in a current sum while the current sum is less than s itself we would keep moving forward and when it becomes more we would make the l go this side okay and if the sum is zero then we have no elements as zero why because we are told we would be having positive numbers that is why we would we can simply do if the sum is zero we want the sum zero so no answer exists okay this was a small thing in the test case that i wanted to tell you apart from that this would be the solution itself now let us start moving towards the solution okay so we have int l is equals to zero and r is equals to zero then we have something like long long sum how this thing is popping into my mind i know that the number of elements are 10 to the power 5 and the maximum size is 10 to the power 9 10 to the power 5 elements can be there and 10 to the power 9 is the value 10 to the power 9 into 10 to the power 5 is 10 to the power 14 which can't be accommodated in an integer that is why i would be using something like long long okay to store the running sum itself it is known as running sum basically we won't store the values we would just store the current sum okay current sum is equals to running sum i am just telling you so if s is equals to equals to zero or i can say that if not of s is true then we would return something known as minus one to it okay then we would say while l is less than r if l and r crosses each other then the concept is broken so l should be here and r should be here and they should at max be beside or on top of each other if the number of elements in the sub array is one because one element is also considered as a sub array apart from that this is negative elements so this is not possible so we would say while l is less than equal to r that is why it is less than equal to r because one element is also considered so we would say if the sum is less than the sum we want okay then we would increase the current sum that is a of r and then r plus plus first a of r is added and then we would move forward else if sum is greater than s then l should move forward okay if l is moving forward we need to decrease it from the sum also so sum minus is equals to a of l plus plus 
okay after adding l is moving for after subtracting l is moving forward else in this scenario we can see that the sum is the same itself okay the, we have got the sum either it can be more either it can be less or either it can be equal the sum is becoming this so we would say return plus plus l why because l plus plus and then r r is more so we are returning one based index r is already more and we are just moving forward l way that is why it is plus plus l and then r okay we would return that if at any point r is becoming more than n because of this if statement after this so we would terminate from this point okay if they are both moving just this just this and they both are moving till this point and we would have index out of bound error that is why we would say if r is greater than one see this is l this is r okay if r is touching then it is gone so if r is greater than n we would return minus one to it okay else if this is not true then in either of the condition we were not able to find an answer that is why the answer to this is minus one so this problem is not an easy problem again repeating it so the intuition of this can be brought by that problem this is a trick that that would strike in your mind if you have already solved up the i would just tell you the name again sub array with given sum in a sorted array after we learn two pointers then this thing would pop into your mind otherwise this is not an intuitive approach okay so you would after it might be a scenario that you would come to the conclusion that in that question we are using l and r at these position l is here r is at the end but here we are just moving from the start why how i came to the intuition of this i will tell you the intuition of that also basically we want the first occurrence so it might be a scenario that r is here and l is here so l got there 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 and we considered the last sub array that is why to not consider the last sub array to consider the first sub array we both are starting from the first index this was a small difference from that idea that i explained that's it for today thank you and have a nice day this is mr siddharth hazra signing off